Welcome back to The Bank Guide. I'm your bank guy, Colin. And today is another video in the 5-Minute Logic Expert series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. And today we're talking all about the Logic Compressor. This is a very cool tool that looks extremely confusing, but it doesn't have to be. And that's the goal of today's video is to simplify the Logic Compressor so that you can really understand how to use it and do what you want to with it while taking advantage of all the tonal options that it provides. So whether or not you're a complete beginner or completely confused by compression, this this video is for you because we're going to really simplify it in a way that I think is going to be helpful. Or if you're more advanced, I think you'll like the way that I explain compression. I've never heard it explained this way, and I think it will be interesting to you and maybe help you use compression as well. And I bet there's some of the tonal shaping things that this will help unlock for you as well. Now, before we get into it, I also want to give you something. Compression is a huge part of the mixing process, but it's just one of the steps in the mixing process. And I want to give you something to help with the entire mixing process. It's my six step checklist to a pro mix. It's completely free from link in the description below. It gives you some additional tips for you using compression. I know compression can be confusing, so definitely get it for that reason, if no other reason, but also just to understand kind of how it fits in the entire mixing process. It's completely free, so be sure to grab it, but let's go and get into Logic and start taking a look at Logic's compressor. So this is the Logic compressor, and holy cow, there are way too many buttons and knobs on this thing, so let's actually simplify it first. 90% of what you need to set on a compressor is just in this area right here. So let's really break these down because 90% of what's going on with the compressor is happening right here. So the way I want you to think about a compressor is like an automatic volume fader. You set a threshold, and if the sound ever crosses that threshold, it automatically gets turned down. So just imagine someone on a finger, like a mixing console, automatically turning that sound down for you so that it never gets too loud. But it's not the only reason that you set compression. You can do it to contain the dynamics like that. If you set a really fast attack time, basically as soon as it hits that threshold, it gets turned down. That can help contain the dynamics. But if you slow down the attack time, it will actually let that initial hit through and then turn it down. And that actually makes it a little bit punchier. It can cut through the mix a little bit better. You're almost adding dynamics to that performance now. The release time is how quickly it lets it back up. So a really fast release is going to bring up all the subtleties with it. Uh, a really slow release is basically going to turn down those subtleties. So imagine on a snare hit, every time you have a snare hit, it slowly releases back up. Everything in between the big hits gets turned down and just the big hits jump through a little bit more. So that would be a slow release. A fast release is going to bring up kind of like the room noise in between each of the hits and that's going to add energy and add liveliness to the track. So it depends on your goal, right? The release time can help you shape the tone. So think of attack and release as basically how much punch do you want and how much you want the subtleties to come through in the mix. And then your ratio is how intense it is going to turn it down. So basically just think of it as an intensity knob. But if you want to understand it a little bit more technically, a three to one ratio means that for every three decibels it passes the threshold, it's only going to let one decibel through. A 10 to one ratio would be for every 10 decibels that it passes, it's only going to let one through. So that's obviously more intense compression. So just think of it as an intensity knob. I set my threshold and my ratio in conjunction to get the amount of compression that I want and kind of the sound of the compression. And then I think of the attack time and the release time as my punch and my tone. And then you use makeup gain just to make up the volume that you lose because obviously if it's turning down the signal, you're gonna be losing some volume. And then a knee is basically, is it gonna be soft or is it gonna be intense? So it's kind of rounded or really sharp. I don't set the knee nine times out of 10, if I'm being honest with you. Maybe I'm wrong for that. Let me know in the comments below nicely, but I don't find it to be make or break. A lot of compressors don't even give you access to the knee, so I usually don't worry about it. So I typically would say just don't worry about the knee. Now, it's really important to also understand these buttons over here. First and foremost, this auto gain. It will default to being on negative 12, but I recommend you just turn it off. Auto gain is trying to balance the volume for you. The problem with it is that sometimes, at least in my experience, it actually makes it louder, and then it tricks my ears into thinking that I'm like what the compressor is doing and really it's just making it louder. We tend to prefer things that are louder. So I turn it off and I just balance the makeup gain with my ears instead. That way I'm not thrown off by the auto gain function. The second is the auto release. There's nothing wrong with using auto release. Sometimes I'll use it. The important thing to know with auto release is that it means that whatever's happening with this knob isn't happening anymore. So in this case, we're going to use the release function. So I'm going to turn auto release off. So auto gain off, auto release off, or just unselected. Now, 
you'll see on the left side, there's an input knob. This is just your volume coming into the compressor. I typically don't use this because if the signal coming in is too loud or too quiet, I would rather adjust that in the plugin before or on my region gain or whatever. And then over here on the right side, uh, we have a few options that are really cool to use. So the first is a limiter. This is basically just a second level of compression that's really, really intense compression. It's a limiter. So it's basically saying that the sound cannot pass the threshold that you set here. So here you would just engage it and then set a threshold. This can be great for containing if you have any spikes that are just a little bit too big, the compressor isn't quite containing them enough, you could contain them a little bit more with the limiter. Or if you made it a little bit too punchy and you just kind of want to shave off the top of the spikes, you could do that with the limiter as well. And then we have our distortion. Now it will default to being off. This distortion is actually really cool though. So I recommend setting it on soft on most of your sources. This is going to add a little bit of distortion, but really it's subtle saturation unless you're driving it really, really hard. And the idea here is kind of to bring in some of the saturation that you get in an analog physical unit out in the real world. And so by doing this subtly across a lot of your tracks, you're going to bring in a little bit more fullness into your mix without really doing anything. It's very subtle in small stages across all of your compressors. And then it really, uh, you, the magic of it really comes when you start to mess with these different models up here in the top, which we'll look at at the end of this video. And then down here we have our mix all the way to the left would be no compression, all the way to the right would be 100% compression. So this just means that we're hearing only the sound of the compressor. This would mean we're hearing none of the sound of the compressor and then you could actually blend it to taste if you want. That's pretty cool that they include that. And then finally we have output gain. And I do actually recommend if you're using any distortion, go ahead and dial this back about two decibels, maybe two and a half decibels because the distortion just adds a little bit extra volume. So we're turning that output down just a little bit. Now there's some additional things with sidechain. If you're just starting out, we're not gonna focus on that today. I could do a whole other video on that. So if you want that, let me know. But for now, we're just gonna leave it and focus on the output. Okay, so now that we understand all the main parts of this compressor, let's actually dial in some compression and then we'll wrap up by talking about these different emulations at the top. So here we just have some drums. The first thing I do is I bring my threshold all the way up so I'm not automatically engaging any compression. I wanna kinda of dial it in. With drums, I want kind of, kind of intense compression. So I'm gonna go about four to one on my ratio. That's just the starting point for kind of intense compression. But again, just think of this as very, very subtle over here to very intense as you get over to the right. Anything from 10 and above, it starts to be very, very intense and limiting compression. But we're just gonna go four to one for these. And then uh, we don't need any makeup gain yet. We'll dial that in once we actually start to get some compression. On something like drums, attack time of 50 milliseconds is enough to let that initial hit through. You can slow it down to let even more of the hit through, but typically speaking, 30, 40 milliseconds is like the most that I typically get on something like drums to let that initial hit through. But trust your ears here. And if you are really working on something you're running to contain the dynamics, you'd bring this down even further. If I'm trying to fatten up a, a drum sound, I might actually do a fast release so it squashes those hits. But in this case, what I wanna do is make them punch or let them kick through a little bit more. So we're gonna go about 15 milliseconds here. And then for the release time, I'm gonna go just 50 milliseconds or 51 milliseconds technically. And that's gonna bring up kind of the room noise and the energy of the drum sound in between each hit. So let's go and take a listen to this on drums. Bring down our threshold to get it engaging until we're getting about the amount of compression that we want. So you can hear those hits are a little bit punchier. They're just like, if you focus on the kick drum, it's just really cutting through a lot more. And we can see that our volumes are a little bit louder after. So this was 6.3 over here on the left. This was about 4.5. So I'm gonna dial back the makeup gain just a little bit. So this is about 8.5, 7. We'll dial the output down just a little bit too. So off on. So notice when I engage it, notice that the kick just gets punchier. It's just cutting through more. The snare's cutting through more. Uh, and then there's also just a little bit more energy to the drums. Check it out. So this will be off to start and then I'll engage it. A little bit flat. Right, go back off, a little bit flat. And we could even go a little bit more intense, bring this threshold down a little bit more, get even a little bit more compression if we wanted. A little bit flat, very intense, right? It's kind of crazy. And we add that in the context of the mix. Now I should mention this is completely unmixed. The only basic thing happening here really is this compressor on these drums. But in the context of all the other tracks in this song, check this out. This is on, if I turn it off. Nice and 
It's subtle, but the drums cut through a little bit more and there's just a little bit more energy to them, right? And you could play around with this mix knob if you felt like it was too much, too intense. But in this case, I actually think it's working pretty well. Now, the last thing I wanna do is take a listen to this uh, as we go through these different emulations. So each of these options up here across the top are emulating real analog units that have their own characteristics, their own tones. You kind of get like thousands of dollars worth of compressors in this one plugin built into Logic. It's really pretty crazy. Okay, so if we listen to this in solo, this is the uh, Platinum Digital. This is just gonna be crystal clean, clear. Uh, I use this primarily if I'm just trying to transparently contain dynamics. So this is great if I'm just kind of trying to shave off the top of the biggest peaks on vocals or uh, on acoustic guitar, for example. And the goal is to be transparent. Each of these is gonna have their own tone. And as I flip through them, you're gonna hear a little bit more compression, a little bit less compression. So you might have to play around with the threshold to get it to do the same thing that you want, but listen more for the tone and the sound that it's giving it. So as I go through them, you'll notice some have a little bit more uh, punch, some have a little bit more body. Check it out. So this is digital to start. Way more intense, right? I like that one actually. This one's a little bit cleaner. This one has a cool kind of upper mid-range bite to it. This one's a little fatter. Okay, so I think I might be liking this vintage fat. So listen to this compared to the Platinum Digital. There's just like a little bit more energy to it. And then we go back to uncompressed. So with these emulations, don't worry about being right. Just select whichever ones that you like. The big thing I'll say with them is be sure to make sure that if you've already set your makeup gain and your threshold and all that, as you flip through them, the amount of compression might switch just a little bit. So you might need to continue to adjust your threshold and makeup gain to make sure that you're getting about the same compression on the different models. But ultimately just trust your ears and you'll get some of that analog feel from this compressor, which is really, really cool. Okay, I know compression can be confusing, so be sure to grab that six step checklist to a pro mix. I'll give you some more tips for compression in it. It's completely free from the link in the description below. I'd love to hear from you. Have you been using the Logic Compressor and what do you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another five minute Logic Expert. One thing at a time, I can